Hey, everybody, and welcome to our live. We are so happy that you are joining us today. We are going to show you guys our new Easter bundle. But before we do, I just want to say hi to everybody in the room here with me. I have Jennifer Deer in the corner there. Jen, I think your mic's on. I think say hi? it is. Hello, everyone. Is, is today the day you're going to be on video? Uh -huh. uh, okay. Well, anyways, we knew the answer to that before we even asked the question, but I can still try. James Deer is over in the corner there. So James is going to be monitoring things. And Beth Deer is in Canada right now, and she is monitoring as well. So any questions you guys have, just let us know. Today is a little bit of a show and tell. We're going to show you our new Easter bundle that we have going on, and we're super excited about the bundle. Uh, and uh, I guess other than that, do we have any questions? We have people checking in from all over the place, right, Jen? That's right. Welcome, okay. everyone. Thanks for joining us. Awesome, awesome. And I am already thinking that I'm experiencing some technical difficulties, but we will see. Up oh, there we go. Okay, so that should hopefully be a little bit better. And there we go. Okay, so for our Easter Live, I wanted to show you guys what we have been working on for the last couple of months. And I do have samples to show you. Uh, this is a bundle that has four different collections and two In The Hoop projects. And I'm going to show you a video of the In The Hoop project that uh, I did when was it that I did that one? Like yesterday we ran the samples, I think. James, actually, no, it was two days ago. Yesterday we ran the samples and two days ago we ran the samples and yesterday we did the editing for the video. So I'm going to be doing a live voiceover for that one. Uh, we are prepared, believe it or not, but there is a lot of stuff that we did for this. And this is actually one that's called Easter Kitchen. And there is a bunch of different designs that are included with this. And I'm going to uh, show you guys on the... Uh, camera, if I can, let's just hide this one. I'm going to bring the camera up full screen and let's switch it over so you guys can see. But these are all done in five by seven hoops and we do include the EMB files. So a lot of these you would be able to resize and somebody needs coffee. This is, I think, for me, Jen, and you. For me, Cause, yes. Yeah, because we are definitely coffee lovers. I was prescribed by my doctor to drink at least three or four cups a day. Uh, Jelly Bean Farms, Old Fashioned Family Recipes. And then we have a beautiful Easter Bunny. So these are all done so that they, they are filled in with stitches, but there's a lot of negative space. So you're not getting really, really high stitch counts on these. And even within the uh, one design here, and I'm pretty sure I did this so that you could do it as an applique. Not 100% sure, but there is a mo motif fill uh, that's in there. These designs I actually did about two or three months ago. We try to work ahead as much as we can. And here is an Easter egg uh, hunt, and this is hop this way. So kind of cute. And then we have another one with the same bunny. We have Cottontail Candy Company, best sweets in town. And then this one, keep in mind, this is the Easter kitchen. So Cottontail Farms, cafe and bakery, freshly baked inside. And then we have Mr. Bunny. And this one is the same kind of as the girl bunny, but obviously a blue bow tie. And then the last one in that collection is this one here, Bunny Kisses Latte Wishes. And that is an applique on the inside. So these are just cute designs, kind of, you know, fun and not overly, I guess, uh, uh, stitch intensive and not overly detailed, but they are cute. And I think there's one more in this one. Actually, there's a couple more. So there's a couple more in this pack as well. Carrot patch, 25 cents each. I think eggs are going to be at a premium this year, though, right? That's uh, <laughs> Apparently they are. Yes. <laughs> they, they are. So, And then we have Happy Easter with the bunny. So that is the first one that we have in that collection. And then uh, we did actually do another collection of sort of uh, easy theme-related designs. So these are not really detailed designs. But I, I promise you, I did do some super detailed designs, and those are the ones I'm excited to show you. But these ones here are the Easter religious designs. So these definitely have a theme of Easter and you know Jesus uh, resurrection, and that's what Easter is really all about. But we do love the Easter bunny and the chocolates and the eggs and everything else as well. But for those of you who are uh, practicing Easter for its, I guess, original what would it be? I guess celebration. This uh, design pack would definitely be for you. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll just 
get my camera pointed over to the other side if I can. There we go. Minimize this one. Sorry, guys, you know the drill by now. I have to talk out loud so that I can remember to do two things at once. Right, Jen? That's right. <laughs> so any questions you guys have, please feel free to ask them. But this one is kind of cute. A lot can happen in three days. And this one I actually like. Silly Rabbit Easter's for Jesus. And then this one here, Saved by Grace. So again, these can be put on a sweatshirt or they could be put on a tote or pretty much, I guess, anything that you would want to put them on. A lot can happen in three days. This one is chosen, blessed, forgiven, and redeemed. This one is he lives with the cross and the eggs. Easter blessings. And here it's, this one was cute. It's not about the bunny, it's about the lamb. And then this one pretty much sums it up. He is risen with a uh, Bible verse, Matthew 28, 6. So those are just uh, theme related, definitely more for the spiritual side of Easter. We'll bring this one back. And this is the one that I am all excited about. We have, uh, I guess, over Christmas, Valentine's Day, and St. Patrick's Day, we've been working with a new artist, and I just love the detail and the whimsical feel of the art collections that she does. And so we, of course, had to get these ones done as well. And these ones are definitely a lot more detailed with regards to, uh, I guess, the, the pathing, the digitizing, making sure that they are cute and detailed, but not crazy, crazy stitch intensive. I, I do have to be honest with you, any design with this much detail and running stitch uh, detail going around all of these objects, you do need extra color changes. You do need to path the designs so that the registration is correct. And I also have to be honest, I'm, I'm a pretty good digitizer who normally doesn't have to edit files. But for these, I definitely have to run my samples. And there were a few edits on some of the outlines. Question, Jennifer? Oh, we have a few questions okay. from the package awesome. we were just showing. But if you want to keep going, you let me know when you're ready. Well, we can we can ask questions while I show this one. Or... Okay, Suzanne's asking, is it felt that you ran the samples on? Uh, yes, it is. I, I ran the samples on acrylic felt. And we do run quite a few of our samples on felt because it's kind of one of those versatile fabrics that isn't woven. Uh, but that or usually canvas or a twill a lot of times. I do run samples uh, if I know a design is going on a stretchy PK knit or something like that, or terry cloth, I will try to run my samples if I know that is the set purpose. But for those of you who are digitizers out there, I have kind of generated my, my own, uh, I guess, uh, templates as they call it, or formula or recipe that I usually use that sort of crosses over to many different mediums. I use certain underlays, densities, and layering techniques that I try to uh, cross over so it runs pretty well in most circumstances, but there's always exceptions to those rules. Okay. Lisa says, she's asking, some of the stitches between the letters and some don't have stitches between the letters. Could you help her understand? Uh, generally, I if I have a uh, stitch between a letter or if I don't register enough space so that the machine registers a trim function, uh, that I usually do on purpose while I'm in the digitizing process. If I see that objects are close enough that that stitch obviously won't disappear, but it's not going to be a huge gigantic stitch that you have to trim with scissors. I usually try to reduce my trims as much as possible when digitizing designs, because every trim does equate to about five or 600 stitches of downtime on your machine. You have to realize that when a machine actually trims and then you know, it has to slow down first, then it actually trims, the machine stops, it moves over to the next place at a slower speed, then it has to tie in and then it ramps up the speed. There's a lot of lost time, sewing time or production time. So I do try to be sensitive when I see those things. Is that something you cover in the digitizers? Uh, it sure is. I, I usually cover a lot. Actually, I cover some old tricks that we practice in the Shifley days. And if you've watched some of my educational videos, you, you'll have seen me do this in certain circumstances where I actually drop a stitch between objects. So I don't necessarily rely on the software 
connecting them, I actually finish an object, I will drop a physical stitch in between that object and go to the next object because the way a needle works is it obviously enters the material, the bobbin pulls the thread down, which causes it to look like it disappears, and then it goes into the next object and starts uh, to embroider. I don't do that as much as I used to. I did that all the time with my commercial designs because they had to be kind of perfect when you did it. So, you know, uh, not perfect, but you know what I mean. If, if you've ever digitized for a company, you know that you can't mess with their logos. Everything has to be exact. And some of them will take out a magnifying glass to look at those stitches, even though they can't really see them. Yeah, right? just out of curiosity, if anybody's taking the digitizer string course, throw some hearts. Yeah, throw some hearts there. I, I just actually, this afternoon, I, uh, I guess I uh, assessed three certificates. So if you are watching, uh, two of them was from one person. And uh, you did a great job, and I'm trying to remember the name. I think it was Sue. But anyways, uh, we do actually have a Digitizer Dream course where I do look at the certification designs, and I do assess them and take screenshots and let you know if there's something that needs to be changed. Awesome. Okay, we ready to show these ones now? Yep. Okay, because I'm, I'm excited about these, and I'm going to go through them one by one as well just so that we can see them. And let's change the camera over here. So these ones are awesome because there is just a ton of detail. I can you see that? Jen? Or I guess you, well, you can see it on my screen here, can't you? I mean, it's just a lot of blending, a lot of different colors. But what I love about this is the outlines on the design line up everywhere. So that is pathed in such a way so that you're going to get good registration. And there is, you know, a lot of these are we would consider premium designs because if you look at my hand, they are larger, but they are, you know, still relatively soft. They're not going to be bulletproof, but yes, they have stitches. You know, there's no way to get around that, but we have detail in those. This one is one of my favorite. And if you've been following all of our different uh, holidays where we've done uh, designs from this artist, the chickadees have been a favorite. They were a favorite at Christmas time. They were a favorite at Valentine's. And now we have Easter chickadees as well. And they are just super, super cute. And of course, these chickadees are in a larger size. This is actually our, I guess, Easter bundle number one, which would kind of tell you that there is a number two as well. So there we have all the details. And if you look at those stitches, they are just awesome. I love the blending on those. So this one here is also from that same pack. And I don't know what kind of an Easter girl that is, but hey, she's, uh, I guess, what do you call those uh, retro, retro kind of a, uh, a 30s flapper type of thing? Are, are we good, James? Okay, awesome. So there's another camper, kind of a retro camper. This one has my daughter all over it. My daughter does love wine. So there we have our Easter wine glass with our little gnome with the bunny ears. And then this one I also loved because it is the chickadees, but it is within a wreath. And again, the size of the design is definitely on the larger side, but it is still relatively soft all the way through. So if you if you like those designs, give me some hearts up. You know, make it, are we getting hearts or sorry, thumbs up, hearts, hearts up, thumbs up, whichever ones you want. <laughs> But they are super, super cool. Give me some love. <laughs> yeah, give us, give us some love for those. I can guarantee you that they took a long time to create. Those are not designs that are, you know, quick and easy. Uh, actually, I got to hide my face here because Beth was busy sampling. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I guess I got to be on screen, guys. I'm sorry. Apparently, I, I can't be heard when I'm off screen. But uh, my daughter, Beth, did these designs. And they actually are a pillow, obviously, with this one. And this one would be like a, I guess, a plate holder or something like that. Anyways, it's that rope effect. But we did the design on the rope effect uh, piece. And then this one here, this one she did on a tea towel. So you can tell if it's going on a tea towel material, you know the designs are not crazy stitch in, in, intensive because you don't see a lot of puckering going on there. Now then we have our bundle two, and these ones are also kind of theme related. 
and they have the same feel, but I made sure I separated them so that it was two different packs. Before you keep going there, yep. Paul is asking what size hoops would those need? Uh, what size hoops? Mm -hmm. uh, five by seven for the most part. Five by seven. Some of them even larger than a five by seven, like the big one with the, the wreath right here. This one, and I got to remember not to turn my camera off because you guys won't hear me. Apologize, but this one right here obviously is larger than a five by seven. You probably need like a nine by nine hoop or something like that. One of our 200 by 300 hoops. So some of them will require larger sizes. And let's switch over here and get this one out. And I'll show you these designs. This one is a really cute bunny design. And I tried to make sure I got uh, with the fill, I guess, kind of pattern, the stitches that I used, I tried to get a real different effect in there for the fluffy fur of the bunny. So kisses and Easter wishes, bunny kisses, I should say. This one here says hop in, and this is a wreath type of design as well. This one was the hoppy Easter, and I thought he was super cute. And this one... Love that saying, silly bunny, Easter is for Jesus. So that one's a little bit more detailed and a kind of, a, I guess, a detailed theme to it. This one here, which has a white outline, and I did it with the white outline and without. So depending on the color, a lot of times when you have black outlines, and if you want to put it on a dark object, you lose the outline. So I made sure I did that one in a white outline format and without so you could actually run it on dark and lights this one here is somebody some bunny needs more wine this one i thought was cute a dressed up or easter souped up truck and here is a smaller gnome holding an egg so this one isn't as large and then this one was one of my favorites as well and that is the Hoppy Easter with that same bunny. So that is our second collection that we did. And I uh, love that one as well. And Beth did do a couple of more samples with that. Uh, I should let you know that all of the Easter designs, uh, if you guys are interested, they are available on our site individually. So if you just like some of them, you can get the designs in individually. If you are a uh, subscriber, to our embroidery subscription, you can actually use your points to get the designs. But if you aren't, and if you wanna save a ton of money, we do have the entire bundle right now for sale for $29.95. And that is 87% off. And I did wanna let you know, cause Jesse did do something a little different on this bundle. Uh, I haven't even showed you the in the hoop designs yet, but this bundle is a little bit different in that we did set this up as a flash sale meaning that from now until Monday, the price is $29.95. And if you uh, go to look at that collection after, I guess, Sunday evening, and if you go there Monday, it'll actually be $10 more for the entire collection. And so, I think James and Beth May are just putting up the link. They're putting up the links interested. right now. So it is uh, an incredible value for $29.95. In the old days, I would have said, one of those detailed designs, in my opinion, is worth $29.95, but you're getting everything that you saw there for that one price. And there are a couple of other really cool things. Actually, this uh, Beth did do a couple of more samples, and I'll make sure I leave my picture there so you can hear me this time. But she did another pillow, and this is where she did the white outline around the bag. I wanted to let you guys see a little bit how you can see more of the black running stitch outlines if you use that that one that has the white outline on it. So it definitely does make a difference. And then we do have two uh, in the hoop designs that are included in that bundle. And one of them was an in the hoop bunny ribbon roses pillow. And that is by our very own uh, Linda Rayburn. Linda is uh, an incredibly talented artist and she has done a ton of videos for us and she helps out in the group. So if you know Linda and you've seen her and she's helped you out, give her some love right now because she does incredible stuff. And this we was- We all love Linda. Yeah, we all love Linda. This was kind of a last minute entry. And the reason why is she posted that picture of that pillow in our group. And right away, my uh, cell phone lit up with ding, ding, dings. And it was all about Jennifer and Bethany 
saying that they wanted that pillow. It's so cute. Yeah. So she, <laughs> both, both the girls were like, we want that. And that was, and I, I thought, okay, well, if, if they want it, because they live embroidery and eat, eat embroidery and sleep embroidery, if they wanted that pillow, I know you guys would as well. So Linda, uh, she went at it. And I thank you, Linda, because you got this to us really quick. You get the designs, you get the tutorials, you get all the instructions on how to make the pillow and how to make the little roses. And she is creative uh, way beyond, I guess, my area of expertise. So that is one of the projects. And the other one is something that I did, which is not nearly as impressive, but it is the uh, In the Hoop Hoppy Easter mug rug. So I did the mug rug and the mug rug is cute as well. And I'll just show this really quick. Yes, it is. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> so there is the mug rug. And I do the mug rugs a little bit differently in that, you know, there is actually a base material. There is an applique in there. There's stippling that holds it down. There's motifs and blanket stitches, which are giving detail around the outside of the uh, applique satin stitch. But when I complete the mug rugs, I, a, lot, a lot of mug rugs I've seen, they kind of have an open end so that you have to actually sew it together or use, you know, I guess uh, tape or there's some glue or whatever it is to put them. I found that I like to do my mug rug so that I have two different stitches uh, that go down for placements with, I guess, material on the top. And I'm going to show you a video in a second, but the reason why is I just have to fold this inside out twice and it actually gives me that coverage on both sides and there's no sewing required. Oops, wrong way. So that is finished when it comes off the machine, no sewing required. You just turn it inside out and it is done. And all the files are included with that as well. And I'll show you guys the video right now. Did you have any questions, Jennifer? We do. Okay, awesome. Do you want to give me a couple questions right now before I show this video? If you like. Sure. Okay, sure. Uh, what kind of thread do you use? Joyce is asking. Uh, thread. I Thread is one of those things where you and every embroiderer ends up with a stash of thread. And I, I do not use any one brand. Uh, especially polyester threads have a very, very long shelf life as long as you, you know, store them within a relatively controlled climate. Uh, rayon threads, not so much. They do get more brittle over time. So I do have a ton of thread that we've used almost back from the commercial days with uh, Robus and Anton. The RA thread is a thread that we used almost specifically when we were doing commercial embroidery. Some of you might not even be aware of Robus and Anton RA thread, but they actually at the time, and I believe they still are, the only thread that is manufactured in the US. So is it more expensive? Generally, yes, because of where it's manufactured. We also use Madeira, which is a great thread brand. We have tons of Madeira. I have thread from uh, all over the place. I mean, Floriani, we have a ton of Floriani thread. I have thread from Sim Thread. I have thread from uh, just all different types of reps. So which thread do I use? Anything I can get my hands on because there is so many different colors. He's got and, his thread stash. Yeah, we have a thread <laughs> stash. One day, uh, as soon as we get organized, James and I are going to do a little walkthrough video with you guys so you can see our little studio here. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, but uh, we can show you the machines that we run our samples on. And keep in mind, this is my location. Um, we have machines in Canada as well, but I have, uh, I guess, shelves with thread and lots of it. So James, when are we going to do that video? Maybe in about a month's time? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in about a month's time when I get a chance to clean the rooms. <laughs> okay. So anyways, I'll show the video right now and let's just go over here and I'm going to do a little uh, voice over live with you because I did not get a chance to do the voiceover today. Uh, but this is the supplies that we actually use for the project. I used a five by seven hoop. I had a piece of material for the background an applique material two pieces for the back of it, and then some painter's tape. So the first thing that happens is it runs the outline stitch. This is just a regular running stitch. And that is just a placement stitch for my first piece of material. And we place this down a little bit of painter's tape on either side, and then you're pretty much ready to go. And it's going to then tack down that material in place. Now, I'm not going to cut it out at this point. You might notice that I use a little wooden stick there. 
Those are actually those uh, nail sticks for like cuticles and stuff. Mm -hmm. I find that they are the safest thing to use. Then I am going to do my next step, which is putting down after the running stitch, my applique. So the applique is what's going down next. Again, a little bit of uh, tape to hold that in place. And uh, back to the wooden sticks. I like to use them because if your needle hits that wooden stick, it will not damage your you know, machine in any really bad way. It's going to actually, uh, and then it does actually tack down just so you know, but that way it's going to hold everything in place so that when you take your hoop off the machine, you're going to cut out with my double edge curve scissors. I personally like to use double edge curves because it allows me to get nice and close to that running stitch. And there, Sammy Sampler is just getting her tape out of the way real quick. And then she will proceed to cut out the excess material on the applique. Now, the other thing that I love about those little wooden sticks is that when you actually buy them, you get a ton of sticks for a very inexpensive amount of money. And it's better to use one of those than to get your fingers in the place, uh, in place of the needle. Now, here we're just using uh, our regular threads and we're doing all of the finishing part of the designs on the applique, keeping in mind that I did not do the finishing stitch on the applique at this point. So it just has tacked it down right now and it's doing all of the uh, gnome and it's doing the lettering and it's doing the stippling stitch. And as soon as it finishes all of that, then it does that running stitch outline. And then it does a motif fill and a blanket stitch and it's pretty much done. Now this is where within the instructions on the PDF and the tutorial, you'll see that I do a little running stitch that has two little tabs on it. And I'm gonna take the folded edge of my material because this material is folded. So the face up side is on the top and the bottom. And I take that folded edge and I line it up to that line right there. And it's going to actually give me a bean stitch, a triple pass. So it's gonna be nice and strong and it's going to hold that piece of material out of the way. And then it's going to come in and do the second placement stitch, which will again create a tiny little tab that's going to show you where to lay down your folded edge of the second piece. So they are overlapping each other and they're going on top of everything so that all you're gonna to have to do afterwards is cut and turn inside out. So now that that's in place, we're going to again do a triple running stitch using my stick so my fingers don't get close to the needle. And as soon as it does that triple run, it will go around one more time around the entire design just to make sure that nothing is going to move out of place. Now then just take your uh, hoop off of the machine, get rid of all your tape. You can take the uh, design out of the hoop and I'm gonna re remove my little T-pins which help give stability within your design. And then I'm just going to go and take my scissors and I'm gonna cut really, really close to that running stitch that it just did. You can leave a couple millimeters away from the edge of the running stitch. Just don't cut into it. Now you can see that it has the fold on both sides. And then I'm just going to fold it inside out and uh, take you know, the wooden stick after if I need to to make sure I get in there uh, and get the, uh, the creases out of it. And I'll see how much of the video he included in this. It should be pretty simple, but there we go. All done. And that's it. And then all you have to do is go in and push out those corners so they're nice and rounded and then you can iron it up when it's finished and your design is done and that should be it so awesome you have your in the hoop mug rug Erlene is asking will that work with a one needle machine she has a Janome yep it'll work with a single needle machine as long as you have a five by seven frame you will need to have a five by seven frame uh, which most, I guess, mid-range machines have these days, then you can run that design. If you only have a four by four inch frame, then none of the designs really in this bundle will work for it because they're all a little bit larger. Yeah, seems like people are loving it. Awesome, awesome. F. St. James says they love the simplicity of it. Sue Tully says love how it's made, no hand sewing. And, and that's really out of necessity for myself because I'm a digitizer. I'm not a sewer. <laughs> so I had to try to figure out a way that I could do this and not have to sew anything afterwards because I'm not that talented. Deborah says she loves the mug rug finishing. Awesome. 
and says she likes the no sewing method. Now I will mention though, in Linda's amazing pillow design, there is sewing required. So that one, that one, there minimal. is sewing. <laughs> yes, minimal sewing. So Beth is definitely qualified. Jennifer, I think you could pull it off. Me, I'm done. I'll do the embroidery part and you guys can do all the piecing together. All right. Awesome, awesome. So any other comments about the bundle? Again, if you are interested, until Monday, it's $29.95, uh, which is a fantastic price for that entire collection. And again, if you just want to get one design, you can get that on our site as well. Keeping in mind that some of these designs here, the ones that are more detailed and are larger, those are considered premium designs. So they are like $8.95 on our site. And they do require more than one point if you are a member, but they're so all basically available. basically we have a club membership? Yep. Yeah, we do have a club membership, just so you know. And it is the absolute best deal in embroidery. You get what you want when you want it. You have access to over 30,000 designs that we have in our collection. We have new releases every single week. So it keeps growing and growing. And it includes our, our patch files, our fonts, uh, the ESA fonts, the BX fonts. All of that is included within our membership download. So it is pennies a design. Yeah, membership, yeah. or you can buy solo, yeah. or you can buy as we just uh, yeah. put this up in the bundle. Any way you want it. Marge says, I don't have five by seven. I have eight by eight or eight by 14. Perfect. You're Those good, you're good to go. Yeah, you'll be good to go for sure. So the question is, who wants to win? Because we always give stuff away. So if you want to win that entire bundle, we're going to give away the entire bundle to one person on Facebook, one person on YouTube, and Jennifer is going to pick what you have to write down to win. What do they have to write? Easter. Easter. Okay. Super easy. Easter. That's it? Just Easter? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's simple. So Easter and you will uh, qualify to win. Uh, I guess James and Beth will choose somebody in a couple minutes. In the meantime, we have a couple other things that we wanted to show you. I still have questions. Okay. And questions. Uh, Beth is going to also do our stitch to win. And if you aren't familiar with that, we do have something within our uh, social media on our Facebook group where you can submit designs from Embroidery Legacy. And if you post it and put a tagline, I believe it is, then you are entered in. And I think we do it every month, don't we? It's monthly. Every yeah. single month we do that. And I, how many, um, actually, anybody communicating with Beth, how many entries did we have this last month? Oh, Total. we had, I can tell you, she did send it. Okay, so how many? 152. So there were 152 entries this last month. So we appreciate everybody who signed up. Uh, and we are going to, she's going to spin a wheel. I don't have the app loaded right here because I forgot last minute. I said, you're going to have to get Beth to do this. So Beth is going to spin the wheel. And as soon as she does, uh, she will let us know through Jennifer and they're not even going to talk. They're going to do this through telekinesis or something, right? You're just going to, because they read each other's minds, I swear. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, here is the winner. Okay, the winner Let's is. Show that up real quick. Awesome. Okay. So here is, actually, let's uh, minimize this so that we can see. And this is not nearly as impressive as doing it normally, but we'll still get the idea. Okay. So the winner is Andy Dowding. Awesome. There you go, Andy. Thank you very much for submitting. Yes, and congratulations. Congratulations. And I have no idea what you just won. Does anybody have any idea what Andy just won? Beth is going to let us know, and she's going to uh, convey that to Jennifer. But you, you definitely won something. So congratulations. And uh, we appreciate everybody who, who participates in that because uh, this is kind of my life's work, creating designs. And I love it when people actually em embroider them. And uh, it's it's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So Andy, if you just want to uh, message in, I'm sure Bethany will be reaching out to you. Yep. You get a year membership for our enthusiast design club awesome. membership. So a year membership. If you already have a year, you got a year on top of that year, and so on and so on and so on. So yeah. So again, sure. if anybody else is interested, uh, it's the draws monthly, and you post a uh, legacy sample, something from our site that you've uh, included within your your sample and you hashtag and you're entered. You awesome. basically tag the file. Perfect. Yeah. And we, we appreciate that. We love to see all the creative stuff. And just so you know, and I hope I'm right on this, Andy, your design will be posted on social media. Correct. Right? And you'll yes. be announced as the winner. And I'm glad Jennifer knew what you were getting. 
which I'm guessing Beth told you that, did she? Mm, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the stitch to win. Uh, also, we do have a free design that's going up and it is in our newsletter and it's uh, Stop Competing, Start Empowering because today is National Women's Day. Yeah, national or international or whatever. It's, it's Women's Day today. Yes. So we want to show our appreciation to all of you women. I, I mean, I, I, I can't, I have to be careful. I was going to say, I love women, but I do love women. All the women in my life are awesome. And I've met so many incredible women over the years at uh, events. And I'm talking about shows and, and retreats and events that we did with dealers. And I got to be honest, that's the one thing I think I miss the most right now is Jennifer hasn't let me out of the house in a long, long time to go in and do it. And I'm uh, throwing you out the <laughs> She's throwing me out of the house. So you, you might see me soon again. On the, if you'd like to see me again Bye -bye. live, uh, put 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 a couple hearts on out there and stuff like that, because I, I know it will be coming. I'm getting a little uh, fidgety and anxious, and I need to get out there in front of you guys and, and hugs and kisses and all that good stuff. So... Awesome. So that is also free and there will be a link to that if it's not there already. Now, do we have some winners for the Easter bundle? We do. Awesome. Let's see. Okay. So our YouTube winner for the Easter bundle, bundle is Nellie Root. So Nelly congratulations, Root. Awesome. Nelly. If you can email into contact at embroiderylegacy.com, Leanne will send you your files. Awesome. And the Facebook winner that we have is Patty Hendricks Jackson. So congratulations to Patty. Congratulations, Again, Patty. Contact at embroiderylegacy.com. Yep. So just shoot us an email and Leanne will get you all set up. Don't forget to download your your design uh, for uh, you know, the, the Stop Competing, Start Empowering. And I think Beth chose that, didn't she? Yes. So Beth chose that design. And I also want to let you guys know for all of you who are embroiderers, which I think most of you are who are watching, and if you are thinking about digitizing, we do have a free 101 video course and cheat sheet. And I, it is sort of a uh, foundational instructions of the anatomy of a design, kind of what goes into design, some of the terminology. And I, I do announce this usually almost every stream I do because I think that every embroiderer should have a basic foundational understanding to know why their designs so out well and why some don't and what you should look for. It's all about education to make this more fun. So that is available. And also just, uh, if, and can anybody check on YouTube? What are we at right now, James, on YouTube subscribers? Because we, right, okay, we, we, okay, I, here is, I, I don't normally beg. Well, actually I do beg quite a bit. I beg you regularly, right, Jen? Okay, but anyways, I don't normally, um. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we're at like 59,900 people, subscribers on YouTube right now. So if you are on your computer, which I guess you are if you're watching, and if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, please do that now because I would love before we hang up from this stream to hit 60,000. That's a big milestone for us. But we actually have almost 60,000 YouTube subscribers. We have three different Facebook groups. One is our geared to all software and all embroidery. That is our embroidery legacy group. And we also have our Hatch Facts group for our Hatch, uh, I guess, software customers. And we also have our Design Doodler group. So however we can support you as a community, that's what our, I guess, goal is to try to help you guys. Right. So if you don't know about these groups, just, you know, ask to become part of one of the uh, private groups and we'll, you know, fill out a couple questions and we'll let you in. And other than that, subscribe for our videos because we have a new video almost every week. Yes, and we have a free design every week. Yep, free design every week. Sign up for our newsletter. It's the best way to find out about all the stuff that we are doing. We are a busy, busy embroidery family. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Vicky says, thanks for putting a tie on and off in different spots. She has other sources that uh, tend to make knots. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's all about the foundation and the theory and, you know, yeah, for sure. We will do our best to produce good designs. I, I, to, to error is human. I did edit a file today where I forgot to turn off one button in my software when I outputted the design. 
and it caused some problems. But if you ever have problems with our designs, let us know about it because we will correct them. Yep, Cindy yep. says all your designs are well digitized and she's speaking from experience. Thank you very much. You, we Cindy. we try our best and uh, yeah, that's that's what we'll continue to do. Uh, hatch free trial if you wanna you know download that as well. We do have a free 30 day trial for Hatch and we are a reseller. Uh, and if you do it through our site, then if you ever do decide to purchase, then we will be, I guess, uh, activated as your reseller and we give lots and lots of bonuses. And I am a firm believer that everybody is only as good as the education that they get when it comes to software. So with your free trial, we have a free educational digitizing challenge. Bob and, actually has a question in regards to Hatch. Yep. Will Hatch be adding more color charts to select your thread type with Hatch 3? Do you know? Uh, I think the ones that are currently there within Hatch 3 are kind of set unless they do an update, which sometimes they will do online. But if there is a thread uh, brand or manufacturer that is not listed within the existing color charts, uh, just let Hatch support know and they will put it on the wish list. I don't know, like we don't develop the software, but I know Hatch has been incredible with uh, you know, listening to customers and their, I guess, needs and wants and desires and putting those into action. So uh, definitely- We have our list that we give and yeah. they also like to hear your feedback Yeah, as well. we, we give our feedback as well. They, they listen to what we ask and they have you know, been very supportive and I know they're supportive of all, of all their customers. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, going back to one of your stitch outs there, I don't know if you can find it. Lisa's sure. asking, what is the outer stitch above the satin stitch on the happy Easter pillow? On the happy Easter pillow. Mm -hmm. Hold on one sec. And While you're looking for that, what yep. embroidery stabilizer was used in the fabrics? Uh, I, I generally like to use, an, if it's a cutaway, I generally like to use a no-show mesh for the most part on almost everything that we, we run sample-wise. No-show mesh is a very uh, thin stabilizer, but because it is heat pressed with a grid, it is incredibly strong in both directions. There's, there's not much stretch either direction. So that's generally what I do with most of my sampling is no-show mesh. If it is obviously a uh, you know, a terry towel cloth or something, then I would not use a cutaway stabilizer. I would use a tear away and preferably a tear away, rinse away. And then of course there's toppings and we have lots of videos on stabilizers as well. That's I'm right. having trouble finding the exact pillow that she was referring I think to. it might be the, uh, maybe Linda's pillow. Oh, Linda's pillow? Yeah. Linda's pillow is actually a applique. So it's an applique. Actually, let me see if I can find it here. Do, do, do. Sorry guys, I'm probably making you dizzy. Uh, there's the pillow right there. Yeah, so that is actually an applique and she almost did it with a bit of a loose edge because I think it's a really soft, fluffy material. Mm -hmm. Almost, and like I don't know. Or something. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not sure what it is. If Linda's watching, Linda, type in the comments what it is, but I, I'm pretty sure that's in the instructions as well. But you could use any material you want. I think just when she cut it, she left some of the fluffy bits there for visual effect. Helen is asking, I need to embroider some writing on Fluffy Minky yep. uh, for christening. And I'm wondering what's the best auto fabric setting for it? I'm assuming she means within hatch. Uh, yes. She picked fleece, but it doesn't mention for sure. And she's doubting if it would be the right choice. And she's also doing a knockdown stitch with it as well. That's actually, that is the key in my opinion, is the, uh, the hatch smash or the knockdown stitch. Uh, that is a stitch of, with a very loose fill that, and Hatch 3 has automated that smash uh, that gives you a foundation for the stitches to go on. So it is more of an automated setting and it goes around the contour uh, or you know the outside edge of the lettering and you can choose how far out from the edges. So if you want it to be very uh, unnoticeable, you can just do two millimeters. If you want it to be matted down a little further, you can set it to four millimeters. And that will uh, push down that nap or the fibers that would normally cause those stitches to disappear. So I don't think you need to worry so much about the fabric assist as you should just make sure you use that, uh, you know, uh, layout or lay down or whatever, this, whatever they call it. I know the different software manufacturers have different names. I know one of the tools has been 
uh, patented uh, for patented a process that has been around forever uh, from the commercial days, but they all call it something slightly different. Then one thing that I would use, even if I'm using that uh, knockdown or that hatch smash, I would use a water soluble topping, Solvi, which is a trade name, and that will help you further hold down those fibers, the fluff, the nap, whatever it is that you're, you're using, and okay. then you should be okay. okay. Oh, and one other note, try always to match, unless you want a different effect, try to match that knockdown fill as closely to the color of the material that you're sewing it on. So it's supposed to almost make it look like it disappears. And she's asking, what's the best t-shirt fabric stabilizer? Uh, t-shirt fabric stabilizer. I mean, I, I've, uh, I, I've used no show mesh. I've used lightweight tearaways, uh, not sorry, not tearaways, lightweight cutaways. I have sometimes used some basting spray to kind of hold them together. I, I don't find as much of an issue now because uh, we do use a lot of magnetic hoops. And what I found a lot of times with puckering on t-shirts or knitted materials was when you took a traditional hoop and you would push the hoop into the other side of the hoop, you would, uh, if you weren't experienced, you would actually stretch the fabric too much so that when it's going in place, it's overly stretched and then it does the embroidery. And when you take it out of the hoop, it goes back into place. And that's when you got a lot of the puckering and stuff that was going on. So in traditional, I guess, hooping of knits or t-shirt materials, which are very stretchy because of the way they're woven, uh, I would always try to limit the amount of stretch while I was hooping. So re reduce the amount of distortion. Now we're using magnetic hoops. I mean, we use mighty hoops on a lot of our commercial machines and the mighty hoops are awesome because they are strong. You never want to get your, it's like a mouse trap. You'll, you get a finger caught in there and you'll have blood blisters. Uh, James, you've done that before, I know. <laughs> Uh, but uh, they are incredibly strong. And because they just kind of snap together because they're magnets, uh, it actually doesn't stretch the materials. So I would try different techniques. But standardly, if you use a no-show mesh, that's what I use standardly. And some people don't like that. It really is the recipes that you find success with. Uh, Linda did respond. She said it's a raw edge applique. Raw edge applique. And she shows all the steps. It's all written out for the bunny pillow. And she's also included how to make those ribbon roses. Awesome. Awesome. So that? Linda, you are amazing. And uh, your tutorials are much better than mine. And you're way more creative than I'll ever be. Uh, is there anything else I can say? I, I For those of you who didn't see it, I went, I, I, had the really bad idea one year of going head to head against Linda in a contest for something creative, for something creative <laughs> and I just got destroyed. So I, I'm if anybody seen that? Yeah, if anybody saw <laughs> give that, us a thumbs up. yeah, give some thumbs up. So <laughs> awesome. Uh, what is the best way to keep fabric from fraying when making patches? Uh, best way to keep fabric from fraying when making patches, I would uh, back the patches with a stabilizer, an adhesive stabilizer. So that, and that could be a variety of different products. We have one actually that will, uh, the tacky back and actually it, it, it adheres and it also makes it slightly tacky and doesn't gum up your needles. So it reduces the fraying or use a twill that has a PVC backing or PVC and buckroom backing because that will also reduce fraying of the twill. Okay. And I think we're kind of... We're almost caught up. Well, if yes. we are caught up, is Smith, is Smith Thread or Brother Brands accepted in Hatch? Uh, I'm not sure. Brother. Sim, uh, those would be Sim Threads and Bro Threads or Brother Threads. Uh, those are thread brands that actually are available on Amazon. If you want really reasonable thread, uh, you can go to Amazon and get those. And I think we we might have a link on our site, don't we, to some of the SIM thread products. But anyways, I, I did test them. And yes, they are coming from offshore, but they are a very good thread brand. And we actually have SIM thread uh, on our shelf as well because they have a ton of colors. So it's all about uh, some machines are more temperamental than others. And give me some thumbs up if you've ever had that experience where you might have 
different brands of machines in the same household. And one brand of thread reacts really well to a certain brand of machine, but you take that exact same thread and put it on a different machine and they tend to not get along so well. So I would find what your machine runs well with and then stick down that course. Awesome. Any, anything else, Mrs. Deer, or am I, am I, I think saying? you're good to go. Okay, well, Easter blessings, guys. I hope that, uh, obviously, it's still a ways off, but we wanted to give you time to sew some really cute projects. If you do, do sew stuff out, please share it within our social media, and don't forget that hashtag. Maybe because you should put the, the things back up there. Which ones? Oh, the, the Facebook uh, things? group? Sure. So share, share it in our groups and uh, on our social media channels and all that. Don't forget the hashtag embroidery legacy because it does automatically register you, I think, to uh, stitch to win, right? That's a monthly thing, I, I think. We'll have to check with Beth how that all works. There's they too, have to post it. Okay, there's too many moving parts. I'm getting confused. I'm, I'm, I'm turning into an old guy here. Uh, excuse me, mister. I can't. I have to talk my way through things. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. Uh, I love my wife so much, and you know I do. Okay, awesome. And one day, Jennifer will be on this camera. She will be on here with me one day. Right, Jen? Right. Okay, see? So you guys heard that. Anyways, guys, I appreciate your watching. I hope you like these Easter designs. I hope you like that uh, free design that we given. And uh, I guess that's about it, right? Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate your watching. Thanks, everyone.